Hi everyone, I hope you're all well, having a great day, and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon Battle Series. We are in the Ultra Series VGC 2019 season, kicking off in our last episode into the Ultra Series with this team that you all voted for to play and kick us off in the Ultra Series in this third segment of the VGC 2019 season. It was a lot of fun yesterday, we had a little bit of a mishap with some RNG shenanigans there, but like I said at the end of that episode, we could have probably maneuvered ourselves around a little bit differently throughout that match and getting a bit thrown off by some of the item choices on that team but not to spoil anything because if you missed yesterday's episode you'd like to go back and just recap on that I will link it up there for you, you can go and check that out before coming into today's episode where we will be continuing again with this team. So just to quickly recap and let you know that the team is in the description down below. Poker Paste and Roll Paste, we are playing the Duskmane Necrozma which is going to evolve or Ultra Burst into that Ultra Necrozma. We've got the Xerneas there, we've got then the support options with the Incineroar. The Mega Kangaskhan which we didn't bring yesterday so hopefully we can see a little bit more of that today. Got the Amoongus and then the Tapu Fini there all supporting the setup around the Calm Mind Ultra Necrozma that we've got there with the Photon Geyser, Earth Power, and then the Xerneas, which we all know what the deer does, don't we? So we had two good games, like I said yesterday, so hopefully we can have a good couple of games today and get a couple of wins on the board and start climbing up the ladder, because that is the plan, my friends. Um, without further ado, we'll just jump straight into it. I guess we're going to get some music on. I was aware that the music was a little bit loud yesterday so i do apologize about that hopefully it's a little bit better going into today's one and um, but as always if you enjoy this sort of content please make sure to leave a like on the video down below and um do subscribe to the channel for daily pokemon content on the channel as well as our guide series which we have started in the ultra series right now and they are on the channel so do go check them out and i hope you are all enjoying them so we've got our first opponent let's hop straight into a team preview got a wacky team going up we've got no no restricted Pokemon at all just no need for any restrictives we've got Heliolisk, Coma All, Toxapex, Mudsdale, Mimikyu and Incineroar okay so heavy trick room team with that then tagged on faster mod with the Heliolisk and the Coma All which has probably got the Z move here to get those boosts but I mean with quite a few fairies in our team we're not too worried about that really uh, I'll lead off do I lead Incineroar or yeah, I think we need Incineroar on this one. Um, we could lead Kangaskhan, that's the other thing. Because um, we do have Scrappy, so we can get around that Mimikyu. Um, I think we'll bring Xerneas. Do we want Ultra Necrozma here? I don't know if we do, to be honest. Um, we'll bring Tapu Fini and then Incineroar. We could bring Amoongus as well. It's decent for the Trick Room, but I'm pretty... I'm, I feel confident that we'll be able to stop the trick room and the only thing that's really going to threaten us in the trick room is that mudsdale so we should be all right i think locking into that so let's get into our first one and obviously because we are starting on the ladder and i am jumping straight into it without any prior playing i we are going to start a little bit lower so we're going to have to get through these sort of fun teams first before we run into any serious teams which we should do by the end of the week i will be streaming obviously in between now and then and trying to squeeze in games so we can ladder up and uh, we can start facing those higher rated teams but i just hope that we uh, this will be fun won't it it'll be fun anyway we've got to look on the bright side of things I'm gonna see the toxapex and the incineral come out for my opponent uh, straight away a toxapex is something that we don't really want to be having to deal with too much. Do we Mega Evolve now or not? Or do we just switch in Incineroar and then protect Azernius and see what this Toxapex is gonna do? Um, I think what we'll do is we'll bring in Incineroar, get the Intimidate off, we'll protect Xerneas, we'll play it super passive. And then we can scout out things like if the Incineroar has got Roar, if the Toxapex has got something that we need to be a little bit wary about. So we'll get the Intimidate as well onto the Incineroar as well. There's no threat of Trick Room here. At least I don't think Toxapex gets Trick Room. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. There's a fake out into Zern and we'll see the Toxapex go for Toxic Spikes. <laughs> Not so good. We're probably going to see this Incineroar roll, I'd imagine. Which is not so good. Not so good. Um, Yeah, okay. Let's go fake out into the Incineroar because I do expect it to have roll as Geomancy as well. We could have 
Well, we couldn't have geomancied there. Really. Um, so we'll get the geomancy boost. The toxic spikes aren't ideal. I mean, turn one, we could have just faked out the incineral. Couldn't we? And geomancied. But we haven't. We've gone for it now. At least we get it off. We get the... Yeah, and there's a scald. Where's it gone? And two, Incineral not really worrying about that slot. Um, okay, we'll, we'll, we will U-turn out on the Incineral, and I'm going to just Moonblast it as well. Although we do proc a berry, that's the only issue. So we could just dazzle and get some damage off onto it. If we get rolled out, we get rolled out. Um... But they might not even have roll. We might be just overthinking it and playing ourselves. That's the other thing we've got to think of. Okay, no roll. Mudsdale. Here we go, horsey. I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. Dazzling Gleam. Toxapex takes it pretty comfortably. Mudsdale. This is the stamina. But, I mean, it's fine, isn't it? And get the U-turn. Actually, we just bring in Tapu Fini. Because... Then we get the terrain and we don't get poisoned. And then your toxic spikes don't mean a thing. At least they shouldn't. Oh, we get poisoned before. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Well, that's interesting because toxic spikes isn't something you normally see in um, VGC. We're going to see a sludge wave. It does knock out the Mudsdale, unfortunately, for my opponent. Uh, we'll probably see the Incineral come back in. It's going to have access to that figure. But I mean, then we just switch in our Incineral once again. Oh, Kangaskhan. Let's bring in Kangaskhan. So we haven't seen enough Kang, have we? In these episodes so far. I feel Kang is neglected. It needs some love. Let's bring it onto the field and let it do some work. I'm going to see the Heliolisk now. <laughs> nice and shiny with its little red jacket on. Um, okay. Let's bring in Kang. And, ugh, I mean... That's just, it's just dazzling gleam, really. I'm not. We don't want to mess around. If we can get through this pretty quickly, we can maybe get three games today. So we don't need to play super passive. I think if my opponent had a way for us to shut down the geomancy, it would have done it by now. So yeah, this should take the heliolisk down. Yeah, bye bye, bye bye heliolisk. Even though I love you with your red coat. Oh, recover. Okay. I do like Toxapex, it's a cool Pokemon. I like the concept, I love its design. It's really nice design Pokemon. It's so weird. It's like little body like hanging under that hood that it's kind of sitting in, but it's cool. At the same time, I do do really like it. It's just not really got the utility that you kind of hope it would maybe in VGC. Although, it's not doing too bad here. It's gonna be probably the last thing standing for my opponent. Let's mega evolve for the first time with Kangaskhan, which is always something I will enjoy doing. Kangaskhan, one of those megas back in the day where it was it was used so much because it was so powerful. It's just not used so much these days. It needs a, a little bit of love, mama and baby. So here we go. We'll get the fake out into the incineral and um, prevent that from doing. Well, it doesn't look like it was going for the um, the fake out there. We do pick up the knockout on the incineral with the dazzling gleam, and then it's just. Lowly old Toxapex with its sludge wave coming out, but yeah, not doing too much after that Geomancy boost in Kang. Taking that quite comfortably. Going to be able to, to do all the work now. I want Kang to, to get the knockout. I'm just going to protect Xerneas here. And let Kang have all the glory. Like I say, we need Kang to get some love. And we'll get through this one pretty quick, so likelihood is we might get three games a day. I'm not going to say we're going to guarantee three games, but... Hopefully we do. Kang! Toxapex is too strong. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to double it. Kang, you do not get all the glory. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. Maybe a dazzle just puts you in range for the, the double edge to take you down. So let's double edge again. You forget how bulky Toxapex is, really. Oh, we could have finished this a lot quicker, but a very good game to my opponent. There we go. That should be more than enough. There's a little helping hand for you, Kang. Get this double edge out. Whoosh. There we go. Good game to my opponent. 
we'll get finished with this one and we'll go straight into game two. <sighs> yes, Shadow. Props though to Shadow for bringing such a, a, a unique and fun team onto a <laughs> crazy strong ladder full of the, the, the strongest Pokemon possible. Um, and I hope you enjoy and have a good time with that team on the ladder. And a lot of success as well. It's nice seeing players like try out these different like techs and stuff like that. And sometimes they may not work, but at the same time, it's nice having that variety and being able to see things because sometimes these techs might work. You never know. Toxic spikes could be utility that could work. I do think Stealth Rock has a lot of potential in VGC. It's something that I've thought about for a long, long time. Um, it's just kind of being able to squeeze it in and use it on a certain Pokemon, that's the, the big question. But we've got an next opponent and we'll come back to Stealth Rocks another time. We'll go straight into Team Preview. Because we have got a team of Groudon, hopefully it's Primal Groudon, I would imagine it is. Ho oh, oh. Tapu Koko, uh, Sceptile, Toxapex again? What's the Toxapex? It's all about tox Toxapex today, if I can even get the words out. Tongue twisted and Lander Asterion. So we're going to have a Discharge Mega Sceptile on our hands, I would imagine, from the looks of things here. We've got to try and do everything we can to get Xerneas boosted up. Um, I think we'll lead Mega Kang, Zern. Uh, we probably do want some Incineral Intimidate support and I think we need Ultra Necrozma in this one as well. So we'll go Ultra Necrozma. Yeah, uh, we'll just lock in with those and we'll see how we can get on against this one. What's with the Toxapex? Is it like official Toxapex day or something? What are the chances though of running into two Toxapex in one episode? Maybe it's the new meta. <laughs> Maybe. The meta that I've never heard of or know nothing about. But we're going to get into it. It's so a good look to my opponent. It should be a good one. I don't expect we'll see Toxapex here. Or maybe we do. Maybe we do. Maybe it's got some mad utility that we're just not aware of yet. I just realized that my desktop audio isn't coming through in my capture card. There we go. There it is. Okay. That was so weird. Okay. Hopefully it was on. I don't know if it was on for the previous game. If it wasn't, then obviously we'll come back to it now. So sorry. I'll try and put some other tune over the top. Um, okay, we've got the set tile. We've got the tap Coco here. Uh, I think what we'll do, Mega Evolve. And we will fake out the tap Coco. And we will... Just Geomancy. We don't want to give the Sceptile any opportunity to get boosts off the um, the Discharge from this Coco. And we would just want to get this Geomancy up. And then we can start cutting through this team. It's going to be interesting to see what the Sceptile goes for here though. We do see a Mega Evolve into Mega Sceptile. It obviously gets Lightning Rod when it does Mega Evolve, which is quite a nice ability for it. Turns Pot Dragon as well. Um, we'll just prevent this Coco from doing anything here though. Get a crit with that second one. Uh, what's the Sceptile? It's super strong. So there's the Grass Knot. It's gonna do a decent chunk of damage. Whew, I mean that is crazy. Look at that. That is that is crazy damage. That's crazy strong. Really, like... Wow. I mean... You just don't expect that sort of damage from a Grass Knot. I mean, Xerneas is pretty heavy. Sceptile's just very strong, just very strong. But we're, we're gonna be able to take both down now. I think what we'll, mm, now nah, we'll just go double edge into the Sceptile and go Dazzling Gleam. Razzle Dazzle, the Coco. And we should be able to take it down. Man, it's still early. These alarms keep going off, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It is very early in the morning. This is what when I like I would normally be getting up now. This would be like the, the last ditch attempt of me lying in bed trying to get a few more Z's, but I'm actually waking up. <laughs> okay, we get the, the Dazzling Gleam Sceptile gone. Coco in a, a really awkward position going into this next turn. But I think we identified pretty early on from the team preview if we can get the Xerneas boosted up. It puts us in a really nice position going forward. 
Groudon likely to come in now, or maybe the Ho-Oh. Um, but we do have Incineroar on the back still, um, and we've got plenty of ammunition left in our arsenal to deal with something like the hot or whereas, you know, in previous formats it might have been a bit more difficult to deal with. So we see the Groudon come in. We haven't been intimidated as well with uh, Kangaskhan, which is the big thing, so we can potentially just go Dazzling Gleam and Double Edge, which may not get the, the Groudon, but it kind of does enough to close this game out for us. Um, and I think rather than switch around, like Xerneas will go down to a Precipice Blades. Primal Groudon will resist the Dazzling Gleam, but because we are plus two, we're gonna take it's gonna take a lot more damage here, so we should be able to um I don't know if we'll be able to knock it out, to be honest. It's so defensively bulky, but at the same time we'll get decent damage onto it. We're gonna see the Coco retreat, see the Hot or now hit the field. It would be nice maybe to get Kangaskhan out of here to get Incineroar onto the field. And we could have potentially protected, but yeah, I mean, that's doing nothing to that Primal Groudon. The Double Edge does a decent amount. It puts it in range for the next turn for sure. We're going to take a, a Precipice Blades. Does avoid the Kangaskhan, which is fine. Um, and Xenia's going down eventually. Which is alright, because we've got access now to. Bring in Incineroar, or we could bring in Ultra Necrozma, which would be quite nice because we can do some stuff with it. Um, probably better off bringing in. Uh, no, we'll bring in Ultra Necrozma. We'll do that. We'll do that because then we switch Kangaskhan out to Incineroar to get the Intimidate onto the Hall. We'll snipe the Groudon. And I'd imagine if you're the Hall, you probably want to, well, deal with either target. We're going to Ultra Burst and go for an Earth Power into Groudon. Because the only thing you can switch out for here is that Tapu Koko. And with the double fake out support that we've got in the team, we should be able to get around the Koko pretty pretty easily, which otherwise does threaten Ultra and Necrozma pretty heavily. What is this Hall all gonna be doing though? Tailwind, potentially. Something we need to watch out for. But if we see a Protect Tailwind this turn, then we've got the fake out. Earth Power the next turn, so we're not in the worst position ever. So we will get the Ultra Burst off. Ultra Burst! Which is a nice animation. There's a Protect. Yeah, I think we're going to see Protect Tailwind. And there's the Earth Power. Ooh, just a Sacred Fire. Huh. It is into the Incineroar though. That's fine as well. We kind of lock this for my opponent. Uh, where we get the Fake Out. And then that earth part into the Groudon. And like I say, they can't really switch the Groudon out because the Coco's in the back. Um, and it will come in. We're going to see the Hall switch out. Reset that Intimidate for later on. Coco hit the field once again. Groudon going for the double protect. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen as we do get this fake out into the Coco. A little bit more damage onto that Pokemon there. And pick up the knockout onto the Groudon. So why the utility of earth power is so good on Ultra Necrozma? So we've just got the hot to deal with. Hmm. The sunlight does fade as well, which helps us against this hot oil. I think what we'll do is we will switch out the Incineral for the Mega Kangaskhan. And just protect Ultra Necrozma here. Because we are at risk from a Z move from this Coco still. Got to worry about that a little bit. I'm just trying to think now, have we actually seen a Z move? I don't think we have. I don't think we have, but it's very early, so my brain is not in gear, so we might, might have done. We probably haven't, no. Just ignore me. There's a Z move. There it is now. Okay, we hadn't seen it. We were funny. Twinkle Tackle everywhere. I mean, it's really good. It's such a good call. It's something that I thought about a lot on Tapu Koko and why. Because you get, like, Ultra Necrozma. Rayquaza, Salamence, uh, Eveltal as well. Like a lot of players are tend to run their Z move on Eveltal, so having that utility there um, really does make it a lot easier to uh, to deal with. Uh, there's Brave Bird coming out, it's going to be into Makangas Khan. Oh, it's going to do decent damage as well. Jesus. That is ridiculous. 
That is ridiculously strong. Um, we'll get Incineroar in though now. Uh, I think we need to Z move that hot or fake out Corko. Hopefully the Z moves enough to get the the hot or this turn. Gotta hope it is. Dang, I didn't expect that Brave Bird to take down Kangaskhan though. Like in all honesty, I really do think the Corko just protects here though. That's the the, the big thing. Um, we'll go for the Z move though. You gotta expect we do get the hot off from fifty percent. We should do. There's the. Yeah, we might just see a double protect here. Mm, no double protect, but we will outspeed the hot all. We are gonna get the Z move. We will cut, obviously, this scene and come back. We will make contact, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we can take down this hot all and pick up a knockout here, and then that will pretty much seal the game. So we'll come back when this is all done. So it's into the hot all. Is it gonna be enough? Come on, please. It's enough, okay, that's fine. Then we just got the Corko to deal with, which Incineroar can do by itself. If we needed to, it's only in 50% health, so we should be able to pick up a win here and take another victory. And we probably got room, probably got room for one more game, I would say, which would be very good. So we'll just Earth Power and we'll Flare Blitz, um, and that should be enough. Discharge coming out. Yeah, we're resisted because of our Dragon Typing. Hopefully no Paralysis. There we go, there's one. We got two. No, we're not even going to be fully paralyzed this turn. So we just get the Earth Power into the Coco, pick up the win. Very good game to my opponent. And uh, like I say, we've probably got room for one more match. One more today. Why not? Eh? Why not? So, nice seeing Kangaskhan. We've featured it twice today. Um, we're getting all the text. We haven't featured Amoongus very much so far, but I'm sure we will further down the line with this team. So hopefully it doesn't take too long for us to hop straight back in if we can click through as quick as possible. I guess we need to pick some decent music as well going into this next one. So um, continue battling. I really want to get Necrozma version 2 on. That's what I've been trying to do when I've been remembering. Can we get it? Because it's quite way down the list, isn't it? There we go, we've got it. Okay, Necrozma version 2 going into this last game of today. So I don't think we'll be able to squeeze in one more after this unless we have some crazy game where it's over in like two turns but we've got our next opponent from japan and they're playing a team of dawn wings necrozma salamon zapdos stack attacker tapu lele and groudon this is a cool build i like it quite a lot so we've got the 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 dawn wings necrozma that does cause our dusk main especially when we're ultra burst a few problems because of that moon guys beam it's got there you've got the salamons the zapdos uh, the stack attack are going to be the trick room setter on the team. I uh, tap a Lele as well to support the, the Ultra Necrozma. Um, support against any fake out support as well. And then the, the Primal Groudon. So, I think the thing that we're kind of coming in, like, noticeably makes things difficult is any sort of priority um, protection. So, the, the tap a Lele, the Serena that we had in our last episode as well, does make it life difficult for this team to operate as well as we kind of wanted to. Right, let's see. I think what we'll do is... Hmm, we we'll probably need Tapu Fini to change the terrain. Like, 100%. Um, let's go Kangaskhan up top with... Do we go Xerneas or Incineroar? We could have double fake out. It's a bit pointless, though. Um, no, let's go Ultra Necrozma. Yeah, Xerneas and then Incineroar. We're not bringing the Tapu Fini. And I don't think we've got really room to either. So it's a little bit of a shame. But I think we need the rest of the team. The components from that side anyway. So let's get into this next one. See what my opponent brings. Hmm. I wonder if they do go stacks. I mean Ultra Necrozma isn't too bad against the stack attacker. What I'm kind of hoping is we can bait in the, the Moongeist Beam into our Ultra Necrozma turn 1. Switch into Incineroar. Get the Intimidate. Onto that Pokemon. And yeah, with them. Um, I mean, one of the things we could potentially do is Ultra Burst, Fake Out, Scrappy Fake Out, that Necrozma, and just go for an Earth Power into the Groudon. We will take a Precipice Blade at the same time, but it might be nice just to get rid of it. 
We can. Um, yeah, we'll go for the scrappy fake out into the Cosma. Uh, we'll. Yeah, ultra best, and we will go. <laughs> yeah, Earth Power, Earth Power. Because the thing is with this Dawn Wings, it has to. Yeah, it's not even gonna. It's not even gonna. Okay, we're just gonna see the Tapu Lele come in, which is fine. I don't know if the Earth Power gets a ground on. It depends what kind of build a ground on it is, because if it's so, like if it's if it's bulky. Which is likely to be. We probably aren't get the knockout. But if it's like straight up offensive, there's a good chance that we pick up the knockout here. Fake out not gonna do anything. Earth power straight into that Groudon. Let's see what damage is like. Can we take it down? <sighs> nearly, nearly. Eruption. That's ideal. I mean that is like you can't ask for, <laughs> for anything more than that, can you? Um okay. We'll mega evolve, we'll go for a double edge into the Lele. And we will go for another Earth Power into the Groudon. I mean, do we go Photon? I think we just go Photon Geyser into the Groudon. Take advantage of the Psychic Terrain. Because it's likely something like the Salamence could come in there. Not going to see that though. The problem is, I guess, if this Lele is Scarfed. And that's something we kind of rushed in a little bit ahead of ourselves. Okay, no, no Scarf there for the Tapu Lele. Which is fine, so we'll get the, the Groudon. No. Special Groudon though, special Groudon so good. We did a stream last week with their uh, special Groudon Ivelto. That was a lot of fun to play. Sunlight fades, double edge into that protect on the Lele. So what's coming in next for my opponent? I've got to think it'll be the, the Cosmo, yeah. That's fine, we got Crunch on Kangaskhan, which is, which is really, like really nice to have access to. I think what we'll do is we will crunch that Necrozma. <sighs> I think you've got to attack the Necrozma. My only worry here is it ultra bursts and it attacks into Kangaskhan with a Photon Geyser because it will be able to pick up the knockout on Kang in this psychic terrain. At the same time we've still got we still got our NC, so we're, we're all right. There's a Moonguys Beam, it's into the Incineroar. That's fine. We will be able to get this Dawn Wings Necrozma. It's not ultra bursting though, which is interesting. Just want to stay in this form for now. Try and potentially avoid any damage from the Kangaskhan, I guess. Is it going to be enough? We do get a defense drop though, which is pretty nice. So close! So close. Kangaskhan. Psychic going to be into Kang. It does really nice damage. Um, we could just snarl here, preserve. I go to Kangaskhan. Um, hmm. Do we need Kangaskhan for the rest of the game? Hmm. Probably not. I'm gonna try and double edge the Lele if we can, and I'm just gonna snarl as well with Incineroar, we can't really do too much. Okay, we're gonna see the Necrozma switch out, so we potentially get this double edge into the Lele. We will go down to the recoil damage, but it, okay, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to do that this turn, which is all fine. Right, we do get the Snarl off though. Which does reduce the attack on that. Mm, maybe we see a Trick Room now. Uh, I think we've got to get rid of the Tapu Lele uh, and we'll U-turn out onto the Stack Attacker because we the, the one thing I want to do is try and get this Intimidate again. Oh, we're going to see the Lele switch out. Okay, that's a nice play from my opponent for sure. The Trick Room probably does go up here. But the Psychic Train is going to run out at some point. And this isn't going to be over by any means, anytime soon, I don't think. Mm. This is where we miss, because I got raw on the Kangaskhan, but this is where you miss kind of low kick, really, because the low kick would come in so useful here. Um, we're not going to see that, we're going to just see a rock slide from the stack attacker, which is interesting. Hmm. And there's the beast boost. Beastie boost, okay, the terrain does 
disappear from the field. Do we go Ultra Necrozma or Incineroar? Thing is with Ultra Necrozma, I need to try and keep it around so we can utilize that Earth Power later on in the game. I really think though that we'll probably see the Necrozma burst and the Tapu Lele come in on the stack attacker. That's what I would expect. Um, but I don't want to just, ah, oh, this is the problem. I think we just flare blitz the stack attacker at this point and dazzling gleam. Yeah, it's going to switch out to the Lele. So potentially here we get a double knockout, which just leaves that stack attacker. It depends what a photon geyser does from this um, oh, pris prismatic laser. Oh my gosh. <sighs> sure, it has to recharge the next turn, though, doesn't it? So we do get Ultra Necrozma in. Get some decent damage off into that type of Lele at the same time. Pretty sure Prismatic Laser, you've got to recharge. I'm sure it's a double a double turn move where you can use it, but you recharge the next turn. Pretty sure I'm just remembering, trying to remember back to my um, MBL days. So we will just, uh, do we, yeah, Photon Geyser. Tapu Lele should get it. We'll Earth Power the Tapu Lele. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, Photon Geyser, we should get. I'm just gonna Z move the Tapu Lele, just to make sure. I can't, I can't allow it to survive this turn. I know we've got the Psychic Trainer, but I don't wanna Earth Power it and it survive and then it Moon Blast us. Yeah, it does have to recharge. So we're gonna get the Z move off. Hopefully, in Psychic Terrain, even though the Tapu Lele will resist this, even though it's got a, a crazy good special attack stat, it should be it should be able to take it, but we will have to cut this. And do we get the knockout? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's do it. So we can get it here? Yes, we get it. Okay. Yeah, and we'll be able to take down a Stormwings Necrozma, and then the, the stack attack is easy to deal with with an Earth Power, so that's, that's fine. Um, and that clocks us up to... Some nice wins today after yesterday as well, after that first game yesterday. So that's good for us to hop forward on the ladder as well, which is always going to be nice for a stack attack coming out. Yeah, we've got this Earth Power, which will be able to pick up the knockout pretty easily. And that should close up game one for us right now. So Earth Power into the stacker. And um, I think there's been an issue with the, 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 the audio. It keeps coming and going, I think, on OBS for some reason. So I'd probably do an overlay today with music and we'll be back with it normally tomorrow. I'll check out why it's been weird. So there we go. Very good game to my opponent, though, and uh, clocks up another nice win for us today. So we're going to end it there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It's been a lot of fun doing it and uh, taking the team out and seeing a few different elements of it in today's episode. But we'll be back with more episodes, games tomorrow. So do tune in for that at the same time every day. And uh, I will just say thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy whatever you're doing. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you for the next one. So until then, guys, take care. Bye-bye.